Minnesota. Got here to cabin that we're going to be staying for the next few days. Late, well not, pretty late last night after looking for great gray owls all the way until it got dark out. We did not find any great grays. We did not find any owls yet. I did get three lifers yesterday. Townsend Solitaire, the Pine Grosbeak, and the Black-Billed Magpie. Matt got two lifers, the Bohemian Waxwings and the Pine Grosbeak. And Jonathan got one life, and that was the Bohemian Waxwing. So burning around this area, and then I don't know where we're headed this afternoon, but we're burning locally this morning, and then we'll see where we end up later in the day. Preferably, because I don't think I'm going. All right. Up north. That makes sense. I think that's where most of the great gray sightings have been, so. Yeah. Probably a good idea to look around there. All cleaned off. I don't know, we're gonna find out when we put our drive. There's a little camera up there that was covered in, oh gosh, whatever. It is what it is. You can turn that off, so. It's this button. It's um, the bu that one right there. Nice. Yeah, that rain sucked yesterday. Yeah, that's kind of visible. That was bad, like especially walking out to Gray Jay Way. And especially since it was 33 degrees, like that's the coldest rain you could possibly have. Pretty much. Just, uh... Yeah. With how horrible the weather was yesterday, I they probably weren't out hunting. So today, they might be. I don't know. Yeah, they, they'll hunt in the snow. It's not that rain crap. Yeah. But that's what I'm that's saying. What I've Maybe... seen they're pretty. I wonder what these tracks are next to us here. They cross the road here. They take a gander. Oh, I'm gonna. I think they're all filled up with snow. Yeah. yeah. Oh man. Yeah, I don't know. You couldn't really tell they were kind of filled in. Yeah. I do kind of want to check out Stone Lake around. Lake. Wait, I don't find that trumpet or swan. Oh yeah. I'll check yeah. it out around dusk time, see if we can see some otters. Yeah. I'm gonna start scanning a little bit. Probably a good idea. There's like so much snow for that. I'm covered in snow, but I'm not gonna lie, it was kind of worth it. That's that's probably, you know what? That's my first good shots of rough grouse. Me too, I don't have any. Nice. I've seen well, them, but never gotten good shots. Um, not just yet. You see it with the thermal or just naked eye? I just saw it naked eye. I just happened to look up. Where was it? There it is. Do you see it? It's right back here. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's just a rough. Do you see on the top of this tree? Like really high. Oh wow. <laughs> That's so weird. It's really weird. I guess I tee up some five. But... Alright, now I have some shitty pictures of a rough grass. Oh, there it goes. Oh wow. Man, they're quick. That's they just shoot out. That's one of the ways I remember somebody telling me when I was in Vermont, a way I tell rough grouse from spruce grouse is like by their flight, because rough grouse just kind of explode off, where spruce grouse kind of have like, I don't know, a little bit more of like a fluttery kind of motion to them. I'd love to see a spruce grouse fly. Good spot, that's awesome. Stopping. I should go a little further. Going a little further. Stopping. Oh, there it is. <laughs> I think it's a golf ball. No way, where? Yeah, see it like 
Oh yeah, I see him. I don't think I can see. I looked through the. In the dope dots, I'll get the scope on. All right, sweet. Oh, it's gonna fall down. Oh, just flew, just flew, just flew. Oh, just flew. no, no, no. Ah, I knew that was gonna happen. Hopefully, we'll get another. Well, let's just say, unfortunately, we never came across another goshawk. We continued driving around and scanning with the thermals and looking all over the place for a great gray. And as we were driving around, Jonathan saw some sort of dark bird flying around the edge of the field. He assumed it was just a raven, but Matt stopped and looked out with his bins. And he said, that's an effing great gray. <laughs> and we all just kind of freaked out after that. I can't oh, believe yeah. we freaking got one. That was a great spot, Jonathan. That was because I was looking with the matched. thermal and I didn't see it. I saw it sitting down too, in the but I would have passed snow. that off as a raven. Even now, Dream you work, couldn't like you can yeah, barely see it. Waiting. That's so cool. That's probably where we first saw it, yeah. honestly. Yeah, when it was sitting on the ground. You know, think about that. I think that's first seeing it when it's flying around are so low. Yeah. Honestly, if that's the only great gray we get this entire trip, I, I'm fine with that. All right, now let's get some nice close shorts. Ooh. Well, here's the telephone cut. Yeah, me too. It'd be very satisfying to find something with this thermal. Yeah, it is. Nice and We defied the odds. Yeah, everyone says you can't see great grays when it's warm out. Hey, as long as it's snowing. They gotta be out and about. He did catch a mouse this morning, didn't he? Yeah, I got a shot of him, even though it's like a mile away, but yeah. you can see a little mouse in his bill. Nice. That's so cool. Yeah, he went cool down. He was like splooted in the snow. Yeah. He just sat there for a minute. <clears throat> yeah, that was crazy. Skill. Well, I think the thing with Great Gray is they have asymmetrical ear openings. Yeah. And the f discs on their face kind of like funnel the sound yeah they can just like really key in it must they're here must be so sensitive so after all the excitement with the great gray we then head over to a spot where there had been a trumpet or swan hanging around and decided to take a look and see if we could find that yeah because i saw pictures of ebern and if it's in the same spot that it was before it was just in a ditch if it's like right here that could be some great shots make sure it's not this close to her. I'm not really seeing it, but like, it just seems weird. Like it wouldn't have really, I don't think, left. Going in for it? <laughs> Over a swim. I don't know, that's just weird. I mean, are there ever negative reports? I don't know, I never really looked and saw like actual other lists, but. That doesn't necessarily mean anything because like if, we don't get anything normal here. It's not like I'm gonna make a list. Yeah. Jonathan. Hmm? <laughs> this beeping. The car's gonna start screaming at us soon. What car? The car was just beeping. Oh, there's chickadees. So we spent some time looking around, but we didn't get the trumpeter swan, at least this time. We did see a nice northern shrike perched up, and then it took right off. We were going to look around a little bit more for the trumpeter swan, but all of a sudden I got an alert on my phone from the Zaxxon Bog group chat of a bird that had just been spotted and it was one of my number one targets for this trip, Northern Hawk Owl. I mean, this thing's probably going to stick around a bit, but we should like hit it pretty quickly. Oh my God, if we can get Hawk Owl and Great Gray same morning, holy yeah. shit. Form. Yeah. <laughs> I've got my thermal back here. If you that is true. Are you getting ready? Hawk out. No Focus. Way the f up there. There's a dead snag. Oh, sh I see that. That's gonna be a, a scoper. 
That might be it. I'm not kidding. Get the scopes up, Jonathan. Damn. No way. Yeah. Good spot, man. That thing is. That's crazy. That's totally it, though. That's unbelievable. So at least we got it. Yeah. I'm just trying to see if there's a path to get out there. What are you thinking? I kind of want to. Well, let's see. Goodness gracious. We're full sending it for the whole gal. But you know what? This is what separates the men from the boys. Yep. Yeah. Metaphorically speaking, of course. <laughs> oh, God. I would go up to the, I think, I bet this one, well, is that the one? There's that like one two. That pretty nice. That looks really nice, actually. Where's the snag at? I thought there was a better one up here. There was one that looked pretty matted down that I saw. I don't know where it was at. Up here a little bit. Not this. Where the f*** is this trail? It's up here. Up here, yeah. Along these bigger trees. It's right here. There was another one up here. Yeah. A better one. But this one looks like it takes us right out to it, basically. This one look like the best? It's gonna be the best we can find. We're full sending it in this snow. It's literally this deep. It's like above my knees. It's so freaking far. We're doing it. We wound up successfully getting our northern hawk owl. That was such a main target for me on this trip, and I was so glad we got it. We were able to walk out on this little path to it, but we made sure to stay a good distance from it the whole time. It was definitely such a freaking cool experience to get both of these northern owls in the same morning, and not only to get them in the same morning, but to have such great views of both of them. Next, a message went out on the Zach Simbog group chat of a barred owl, which would have been cool to photograph and also would have been a new one for our Minnesota and trip list. So we went to check it out, but we dipped on that. You guys see anything? Yeah, what? Yeah, yeah. It doesn't sound like blackback to me. You didn't even notice. <laughs> You didn't even notice us pulling away. Smart. I was driving away. You're standing right behind the car, <laughs> and I started driving away. Yes. So they had to walk actually 20 feet. Uh, <laughs> That's funny. Your door's not closed. My door? No, Jonathan's. Jonathan, come on. Still you really gotta slam. I will say, you really gotta slam these doors. You know, heavy. Well, if you run away, it didn't close all the way. So we got the hawk owl, we got some lunch. We were looking around this one spot where a barred owl was reported. We did not get that. Then we were back over at the feeders and we're just gonna, we were just gonna sit here and wait because apparently there's sometimes a pine martin that comes out here, which is, that's another like little weasel kind of thing that none of us have seen. And a board up chickadee came in. Thanks. Um, that one was actually got pretty a good. Things. No idea what to expect if a pine martin comes in. Like, I don't know how big it is. I don't know what it does. Oh, of course, where does it go to pick up the camera? It walks down the post. You know what? I hope you f***ing die. Stupid spot. <laughs> God, I hate them. Fucking wait, where is it?
was a close call. Really close call. Yeah, I think I didn't see it real well, but I saw something like moving to the right. Yeah, it was definitely dark. In the back, and it looked dark and it looked small. I really want to see one of those things. Before, I was kind of like, ah, I don't really care, but now it's like it's frustrating a little bit. So we spent a while waiting around for the Pine Martin, and we had a close call with something I didn't see it that well, but we kind of thought that it was probably a mink because it was way too small to be a Pine Martin, and it was pretty dark. So after we were there for a little while, we then decided to head over to Mary Lou's feeders, which was this woman who has all these bird feeders outside, and she actually lives in Zaxenbog, and we heard there had been some decent stuff around there, so we decided to head over there to check things out. Oh, really? Nine miles. Yep. Due west. Yeah, that sounds right. That's kind of what I remember from looking at Do maps. Have a rough leg right here somewhere a few days ago. Oh, really? So, right along this stretch. Do you see anything here? I a lot see of turkey. Chickadees. <laughs> I see chickadee and turkey. So there wasn't much around there, so we decided to move on and check out some other feeders. I wonder what they have in here. Oh, I see some strip part. I wonder if they black bass. Ooh. But the, uh, Are there? We can keep that in the back of our minds for the future. We're running out of daylight. We do have the spots uh, up in further north, too, for black back and three tail. Oh, there they were back there. There was like a million pieces of peanut butter smashed on that tree. Were there really? Yeah. Was there anything by it? Stuff. I didn't really see any feet. There was a bunch of peanut butter. I mean, like the tree was just lathered. <laughs> so we were able to come across some more boreal chickadees at this set of feeders. And while it wasn't necessarily the best photo opportunities, we were able to get some good views of them. And it was definitely cool to get some more. Next, we swung by the visitor center feeders again. I'm not seeing anything. I hear chickadees. Looks like they gotta put out some new rib cages. Yeah. They're getting pretty old. I bet there's stuff all over the place when they put out some new meat. Yeah. Alright, what now? And after that, since it was getting late, we decided to spend some more time cruising around for Great Grays, but this time we were unsuccessful. So we have made it back to the cabin. We're gonna eat some dinner in a little bit, and then we're gonna go back out to see if we can find some mammals or any owls at night. Today was very successful getting great gray, hawk owl, bunch of boreal chickadees, well not a bunch, but a good amount. It's finches. We did not get the pine martin. There was the mink that faked us out. Hopefully we're able to find some more goshawks. It has not been a great year for owls around here, especially hawk owl. There's really only this one, so the fact that we were able to get good views of it and good photos and even see it at all was incredible. And same with the Great Grey because they've been a little bit scarce. So after dinner, we headed out to look for some stuff at night. Our main target was Boreal Owl, which was definitely very much of a stretch, but we thought we'd give it a shot anyway. So just buckle up and sit tight, keep your hands and feet inside the vehicle at all times, and we're gonna give you a good show. <laughs> Do you see any cars down there? I don't, I don't no. know if it's safe to turn or not. Matt, you're supposed to be in control, man. Continue on Sax Road for one mile. We were out looking with the thermal. That's Jonathan looking with his thermal. And I filmed him through my thermal. And uh, we spent a while, but unfortunately, we did not find anything. Which, we knew it was going to be a stretch, but we wanted to give it a shot anyway. Is that the Aurora? The screen's so freaking bright. Put the gloves oh. in front of it. <laughs> yeah. I don't, good. I don't, I don't <laughs> there. as much for that. I wanted to stay over to the right, too, but... I had heard that if it wasn't too cloudy, the conditions that night were actually going to be really good for seeing the northern lights. So when we saw some weird lights on the horizon, our first thought was it was the northern lights. I don't, I don't know what over there would be what else shining could like that. that. Be? Not well, like there's any cities or football games or yeah. I, I highly doubt it. <laughs> like from all it is a little green. Things. Look at it. The thing that kind of struck us as a little weird is it was still kind of cloudy. None of us knew much about the northern lights, but. We didn't know if you could see it when it was cloudy or not. It depends on how hot the clouds are, too. <laughs> how the hell am I supposed to know about the auroras? Look at that. I want to use my bins for a second. It's like some factory up there. Oh. See it puffing smoke? We ended up figuring out what the lights were, and it was a power plant. So that was kind of unfortunate, but just kind of a little <laughs> funny thing of the night. Kind of building or something that's giving off huh. a lot of steam. 
But well, that's that doesn't necessarily explain the phenomenon. Phenomenon. <laughs> We headed back to the cabin and got ready for our third day of northern birding. I've never gotten views of a trumpet or swan like this. There's even more over there by the boys. 